Welcome to Coffee Talk, an exclusive here on MyWayNews.com, coming to you from uh, Jason uh, Sears Flooring here in uh, beautiful downtown Wayne, America. Uh, he's one of our sponsors of this, uh, this program every week, along with the coffee shop located just across the street from uh, Jason Sears Flooring here in downtown Wayne. Uh, our guest this week is the superintendent of schools for the Wayne Community Schools District, Mark Lettingham. Uh, we're here to talk about uh, the first day of school, some, some uh, exciting stuff that's going on with the school uh, this uh, week, in, or this season, this year, as the uh, school year gets uh, ready to get going here in a few days. Mark, uh, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. All right. Now, first day of school coming up uh, next week. I believe next Wednesday is the yep. first day of school. And so uh, I'm, I think uh, everybody's, uh, probably everybody except the kids are excited about the start of the school year. You know, the yeah, kids probably, I, think, probably, uh, don't I think the kids are pretty excited, actually. <laughs> I, I know the elementary kids are, and uh, I think the junior and senior high kids are, too. They like getting back together with their friends and... Uh, fall is a really fun time around school. There's so many activities and things that go on. So I think the kids, uh, while they might not admit it, look forward to it. Uh, I know the staff is, is excited. Uh, you know, we always bring the teachers in a few days ahead of time. So they report Monday and we'll get, get ready for the school year and ready to ready to roll. Now, how are the enrollment numbers uh, going into the year? No, no, uh, they've been fairly steady over the last few years. What are we looking at for 2016-17? Yeah, our enrollment's real steady. In fact, we'll be up this year. Um, we actually graduated a pretty small class last year of about uh, 50 or 51 kids, which is, is very out of the ordinary for us. We're normally in the 60s and 70s. Uh, the kindergarten class this year is going to be right around 70 to 72 kids, and so and our early learning center numbers are up as well. Um, and so we're... We're going to be up in enrollment. It's still steady. I don't know that I'd call it growth. I think it's one of those things that uh, that class is just, it was a good class, uh, great kids, just not a lot of them uh, as far as uh, our numbers are concerned, but uh, certainly we'll miss that senior class. It was a good group of kids and, and they had a lot of good accomplishments uh, during their time. So uh, we're looking good. Enrollment looks pretty strong and uh, we're fortunate there. Um, you know, it's one of the smaller towns in Nebraska. A lot of them are losing enrollment and getting smaller and and so anytime you can say that you're uh, gaining a little bit or even just staying staying even, that's a good thing. Now, uh, coming into this uh, school year, you guys did some work uh, in the school over the summer. I know one of the big things was uh, new lockers, I think, are, yes. are getting installed. So that's uh, going to be, I'm sure, going to be exciting for the kids to come in and have new lockers to, to work with. Yeah, it, it, they're really nice looking lockers. We've got the Blue Devil Blue, so uh, the, the pink lockers or mauve or whatever color, salmon color, I'm not sure what it was, but those are out. And uh, we got some nice blue lockers in. Uh, they have locks on them too. The old lockers didn't have locks, so we did decide to go ahead and put locks on. So I think the kids are a little nervous about that. They got to remember three numbers, right, left, right. You know, I think they'll be able to do it. But uh, you know, they, it's it's just something new for them. So, uh, and they get their own locker too. The high school kids used to have to share, and so we went with a little bit of a narrower locker. Um, and and that way we got enough in there so all the kids can have their own, which I think is a good thing. We also put new doors on our gym. I think people are going to notice that when they come in the first time. Uh, nice wooden doors with a gla uh, small glass window. Um, just kind of dress that area up a little bit. And uh, Actually, in the elementary school, we, we went ahead uh, through a gift from the uh, school foundation, uh, put a curtain in the middle of the, the gym that uh, you can raise up and down. Um, and so we can split that space in half, which I know uh, the elementary staff is real excited about having that opportunity and then we can also do that for volleyball and basketball and everything else. So there's been some nice improvements, uh, uh, nothing too big or major, but you know, we, we kind of focus this summer on, on maintenance and just getting things cleaned up and ready to go. Um, and so, uh, but, but those are nice improvements. I think that people will see as soon as they walk through the hallways. Now the first day of school will be a short day on Wednesday and then the first full day will be the following Thursday, the 18th. That's correct. Yes. We, we do a noon dismissal that first day just to, kind of work the kinks out and get everybody back and, and uh, we meet with the teachers more in the afternoon. We actually have a lot of things that we need to take care of before school gets going so that, that gives us time in the afternoon to, to get our meetings finished and uh, the first day is Thursday and of course uh, we a few years ago started a, a open house, all school open house, that's Monday night uh, from 5 to 7 and we'll have all three buildings open. The Early Learning Center, the elementary, and the junior, senior high will be open from five to seven. And that's for anybody. That's obviously parents and students, but any of our patrons are welcome to come and walk through the halls and check things out. So 
that's always kind of a fun night. All right, so first day of school coming up uh, here next week. Now, one of the uh, big uh, things uh, that the school is uh, looking forward to this year is uh, kind of a new uh, new concept and a new uh, new opportunity for them to uh, to raise money for a variety of different school projects, and uh, it's called the Giftathon, and they're going to be kicking that off next week. And talk talk a little bit about uh, about how this concept came to be and uh, what uh, what it's all about. Sure. Well, we've been talking about this for quite a few years, actually, because. Uh, it, it really came to be from the, the amount of uh, fundraisers that our activity clubs, our school clubs, had, had been doing. Basically, each activity uh, runs a or had run a fundraiser. They would sell popcorn and butter braids and you know all of those things. And we had heard some concerns from parents and people in our community that you know there's so much fundraising that goes on. Uh, I think the idea even came from, from people in the community and parents, why don't you just have one big fundraiser where um, you know we can just get this over with and get it taken care of. So um, we're going to try this uh, and see how it goes this year. Um, you know, Obviously this is something we want to be a long-term thing, but it will replace all of the fundraising that our activity clubs do. Now the web, which is the Wayne Elementary Boosters, the Athletic Boosters, and the Music Boosters, and the School Foundation, They'll continue doing the things that they've been doing in the past. This is more just for the football team and the, the National Honor Society and the, those types of groups that had been selling things prior to uh, this year. And so the Giftathon basically is going to be a one-week campaign. Uh, we're going to kick it off on the 19th, which is a Friday. It's the night of the uh, back-to-school fall uh, tailgate party that we have every year. And uh, basically for a week, it's kind of a week of giving. We're trying to find a good name for it. I know uh, Lincoln and Norfolk do this. They call it one week of giving. Uh, we wanted to be a little different and come up with our own, our own name, I guess. So we, we uh, came up with the name Giftathon. And uh, what we're going to do on Wednesday, August 24th, is our students, our high school students, are going to comb the neighborhoods of Wayne and knock on doors and ask for donations. Uh, to support our programs, to support our uh, activity programs that we have. Um, and so we're trying to get as much publicity out as we can for that. Uh, they're going to start, I think, about 5.30 in the afternoon on Wednesday. And basically, we learned there's about 81 streets in Wayne. We, you know, that, that we 80 and then we thought of one in a meeting. There's probably more than that. But uh, for the most part, um, you know, we're going to try and hit as many uh, doors as we can with, with students. Uh, just asking people to donate, and, and there really is is not necessarily anything in return, so we're not selling anything, um, but we're, we're still hoping that the community supports us like they always have. Um, we're also going to have a group of kids up in Carroll. Uh, we get a lot of kids that come from there, so we're going to hit that neighborhood as well. So uh, it's new. Um, Lindsay McLaughlin, who's our director of our school foundation, is coordinating this. She's done a great job planning it, uh, pretty much spending most of the summer getting ready for it. and. Um, you know, we're excited about it. Our goal is $50,000, um, and so that's what we're shooting for. Um, in the past, of course, if we sold a, a popcorn or, you know, uh, what else have we sold? Butter braids, coffee cups, coffee, just about anything. Cookie dough. Cookie dough, that was a big one. We ended up only getting about half of the proceeds from that because you got to pay for the product. And so um, we're hoping that this one-time uh, blitz, we're calling it, on Wednesday, is an opportunity for people in the community to support our programs and then uh, that'll be it as far as the school fundraising part goes. Um, we're still, like I said the boosters and, and the foundation and those groups are still gonna do but they've kind of gone to more event driven fundraising. Uh, we just golfed in the Marty Summerfield yes, golf. And I know the <laughs> athletic boosters did uh, had a good day there as far as fundraising goes. Um, we'll continue our of course our holiday tournament is a big fundraiser for us. The elementary boosters um, have, have done dances, they're doing fun runs. So we're trying to go to more event-driven things with our fundraising with those groups and maybe get away a little bit from the product type of fundraising. Um, again, just because, you know, you really only, you, you do a lot about this, probably the same amount of work for about half the proceeds. And uh, we want to, you know, have good, good funds for our kids. Um, you know, to, to have uh, some nicer things outside of what the school supports as far as things go for their programs. So we're excited about it. I think it's a, a good idea, a good opportunity. It's, it's going to take a little time to get off the ground, and I'm sure this year there will be some things that we'll want to do again different next year. But um, 
you know, we just decided let's try it and get going on it and see how it goes. I think it's a great concept and it's uh, something that the uh, com community, I think, will definitely get behind. And, and uh, as, uh, as Mark said, they'll kick that off at the uh, Fall Sports uh, Tailgate Party, which will be uh, next Friday the 19th in the uh, parking lot there at, at the high school. And then as said, the goal is to get to $50,000. You know, we, we talked uh, briefly about the uh, golf tournament that we play on Saturday. And Mark and I were actually in the uh, same, same uh, uh, grouping. Uh, we were both on different teams, but uh, in the same in the same grouping of two threesomes there. And, yeah. uh, uh, we we, cer we certainly uh, uh, we saw a lot of the course. We got our money's worth. We, we definitely you know, got our we, money's we worth. We got a lot of swings in. Uh, saw different parts of the course that most golfers probably don't see. Yeah. And, uh, I I thought it was great, and like I always say when I golf, if the more swings, the the more money I'm getting out of my golf. So. You know, they, they say golf not, it's not it's not a cheap sport to, to get you know, to play on a day to day basis. So you want to get you know, absolutely you see as much of the course as you can. Fortunately, we both had players on our team. You, know, you had Rocky yes. Bull and I had Brad Jones on, on my team, and and fortunately with those two guys, and I think you had Matt Shaw, yep, I had, yep. had Gerald Nelson. That's right. So between those four guys, they they were able to at least keep enough decent shots yep. out there that uh, that you and I could kind of kind of see the Experiment. course without actually having sure. to. To, to go uh, kind of work on things yeah. but again uh, <laughs> athletic boosters that's a fundraiser for them and in honor of Marty Summerfield and uh, that that's a fun event uh, a lot of uh, people come back for that and then it's certainly a good time so we we appreciate the work that they've done with that you bet so the gift thon starting up uh, next Friday and uh, at, that'll be at the tailgate party in the parking lot at Wayne State or Wayne High School uh, next Friday, uh, August uh, 19th, there'll be a lot more uh, information about that as well. Uh, before we want to, uh, want to talk a couple more other, other things. First off, I want to uh, uh, guess, uh, give our sponsors a little shout out. Uh, first off, the coffee shop across the street here in uh, downtown Wayne. They offer uh, breakfast specials every morning from uh, 7 to 11 and lunch specials from 11 to 2. And of course, great coffee, the, the best coffee in town. Uh, I, I, I would fully recommend it if you, if you need a good cup of coffee. Head over to the coffee shop there in, in uh, downtown Wayne and uh, check them out. And then uh, Jason Sears Flooring, who, where we uh, shoot the uh, program every week, uh, they uh, do their own installations. Don't don't uh, charge mileage on their projects. Uh, they're very competitive. Uh, have some great carpet products from Dreamweaver and some great vinyl and flooring from uh, Bowie and uh, Carandine and uh, some good hardwood uh, ceramic and vinyl uh, options as well. If you uh, are looking for uh, I guess to get your floor done or get new carpet put in, uh, Jason's the guy to call. Give him a call at 402-833-1784. As, as far as uh, the uh, uh, some of the projects that uh, you're, you're looking at for the, the coming school year, I know that uh, uh, the locker rooms have been have been an issue uh, for the school for some time. But uh, talk a little bit about what uh, what you're looking at for for some of that for the future. Yeah, we're starting some planning now for next summer actually to. Uh, really look at our locker rooms and also our career tech ed classroom which is kind of down in that area so it actually all works together as far as the space goes um, the locker rooms really are in need of, of renovation uh, not only just appearance and, and uh, uh, fixtures and those types of things but we want to make sure that we are fully accessible as far as ADA goes we want to make sure we meet fire codes and all the codes we have to meet and also Title IX, which which talks about having uh, you know equal facilities for males and females, and so I, I think we've been equal in all four spaces for our locker rooms because really uh, all four spaces are, are uh, subpar. I think I, I just think that um, we certainly uh, need to have better spaces for the kids. Again, locker rooms are used all day for PE classes and of course after school uh, for our students when they're uh, preparing for practice and games. But then also our road teams, you know, we, we need places to allow them to shower and, um, you know, have a place that, that they can use when they're here for a, a game that uh, we're hosting. So, uh, and also on top of that, we host district tournaments and those types of things. So we, we need to do a little better there. And so we're, we're starting the planning now, basically. Um, it, it, and really hoping, uh, shooting for next late spring, summer uh, for that renovation. Um, and uh, right now what we have to do is really go through a process of, of getting some details as far as the design goes and we're hoping it goes out for bid sometime uh, early next calendar year, sometime January, February, so uh, we can hit the ground running and, and get things taken care of. Um, you know, just we, we just need to have a little better space for that and, and uh, I don't know that much has been done since the building's been built down there, so it's been 50 years and yeah, it's kind of like the lockers and the gym doors. You know, we got good use out of those things, but uh, we also know that we want to keep moving forward with our facilities and making sure they're top-notch. So that, that's the purpose, and 
um, you know, we'll see how things go and uh, hopefully, of course, now we're budgeting, we're doing our budget too, so uh, we're trying to do some planning there to make sure we've got the funds to support that. And that was uh, kind of where I was leading next was, uh, was the budget for the uh, coming fiscal year, 2016-17 uh, fiscal year. Uh, you obviously have to uh, get that those details worked out. Mm -hmm. The school board has to uh, approve that, which, which they'll take a look at that, I think, in their next meeting uh, next month. Yep. So uh, I guess what, uh, any surprises in this year's budget? Or <laughs> I guess what, what are you looking at? For no, no surprises. <laughs> we, uh, we're kind of like, uh, we're trying to... Uh, we like surprises on birthdays and at Christmas, and otherwise not. Uh, and <laughs> Definitely so, not the budget. Right? That's right. And, and I think the budget, um, you know, it looks good, I think, as far as our general fund goes. Uh, you know, we're really not planning any increases there. I think we'll come in about the same as far as our expenditure uh, general fund. Uh, we will have to make a little room in our budget for this locker room project. And so uh, we're kind of working right now with our architects on cost projections and those types of things. And then we have our bond funds that we that we pay off. So I think our levy is going to be a little bit higher, but not much. Maybe a couple of pennies, two to four cents, depending on where things land. Uh, one of the challenges with our budget is uh, we receive our assessed land valuation in August, on August 20th. And really that only gives us about a week to take those numbers and plug them into our budget and then plan our budget for next year because we have to publish that. Uh, we have to get it checked through the Department of Education, make sure that everything looks good. So it's, it, we really uh, we have an idea of what our assessed land valuation is going to be this year, but we never want to make any plans until we actually have the numbers too. So we work hard on the expense side over the summer um, and make sure that we're in good shape and all of our line items are, are where, they're, you know, where we project them to be. Uh, we also try to put a little bit of money away um, in our depreciation fund and, and keep some money in our building fund just for the purpose of if something happens, if a boiler goes, if a roof goes, uh, sometimes insurance cover those, covers those things, uh, sometimes maybe not. So we want to make sure we have funds for emergency type situations too. And so uh, that's what we're working on now. And then once we get our assessed line valuation, we'll be able to plug those numbers in and have our budget ready to go. And then our September board meeting is uh, when the budget is, is discussed and hopefully approved by the board. We also published that in the in the Wayne Herald um, the week before so people can get a good look at it. Um, you know, to, and if they have questions, you know, certainly can always give me a call. Now, the uh, state uh, state aid situation, I know it's something that uh, uh, a number of schools have, in this area have, have uh, had concerns with because uh, the state has uh, kind of slowly taken that away, mm -hmm. particularly from the small town uh, school districts, uh, which they, I guess, because of our land valuation, uh, yeah. the the state doesn't think we need any any uh, funding. And I, I know that's a that's something that uh, that you and, and other other school districts have had to uh, had to deal with for for a number of years. And I don't know yeah. if there's if there's any hope in the future for for that to change on the state level or not. But. It's hard to say for the future. I know last year was uh, di challenging for us because uh, we lost almost all of our state aid. The prior year we had. Uh, received about 1.79 million dollars in state aid, um, and it's all based on, on local support and, and, and land and, and valuations of property. And so, what what the formula says is that uh, Wayne Community Schools uh, is able to support their school district with local taxes. And so, uh, this again this year we will not receive any any equalization aid. Now we do receive a little bit of funding. Um, they've changed a few things which have helped us. Um, so we will receive about $230,000 uh, with option enrollment and with our allocated income tax receipts. It used to be they took that away too. If you, if you didn't uh, have your tax levy high enough, you, you lost money somewhere else too, which didn't make a lot of sense. It was a good change. Um, so, uh, you know, we've, our budget has settled down now that we've, we've worked it through for a year. I know our levy went up about $0.09 cents last year, which uh, was tough on people, and, and, I, and we're working hard this year to, to, you know, we don't want to have that kind of increase. And so um, that that's kind of how it works. It's uh, really 65% or more of the school districts in the state of Nebraska do not receive equalization state aid from the state of Nebraska. And that doesn't seem right. I think there's a better way of doing things, and maybe uh, maybe we can find something, but uh, so far no one has the answers. And the hard part about that is a lot of the, a lot of the uh, legislators in the state are, represent areas of uh, higher population districts, right. so so they, they kind of 
it's kind of tilted in their favor. Well, it, it is, is, and then kind of frustrating. locally, uh, you know, our, our ag community really does take a pretty good brunt of that because of uh, the amount of assessed land valuation they have, and their values have increased dramatically over the last, you know, five to seven years, and so um, that's unfortunate, and that's I think something that needs to be looked at. Uh, I think the the, the people in the urban uh, districts kind of look at the amount of assessed land value and. They wonder, you know, what we do with all this uh, this land valuation, and why can't you go ahead and just support your school through that? But it, it does hit our farmers hard, hits our businesses hard, and our town people. You know, we we have a little bit of a higher levy here than than other places because uh, you know we educate a lot of kids. We have over 900 kids, and and we have to support that. Uh, Wayne is one of the uh, last year we were the 42nd lowest spending district in the state, and so that's something that. Uh, we are trying to make sure that our spending does not uh, go too high. And so I, I guess out of 250 districts, that's a good place to be as far as spending goes. Is, that, so, is that spending based on per student? Uh, per student okay. general fund spending is what that is. And so, um, you know, I think that's good that, that, you know, we're trying to keep those expenses down and not, not spend more than we need to. But, you know, we also, it's important for us to provide a quality education for our students. That's mm -hmm. That's what we're here for, and, and they're our future. Um, they're the future uh, people that hopefully will live in Wayne and, and uh, you know run a business or, or get involved with uh, uh, the community and that type of thing, and, and, and or do things outside of Wayne. Um, so you know they're they're our future, and, and we need to make sure we provide a good quality education for them as well. Definitely. You know, so the school budget will be. Uh, uh discussed at their meeting in uh, September, the uh, second Monday in September. Of course, their meetings are open to the public. Uh, they meet at 5 o'clock at, uh, at the high school. I believe that's in the library, right? Yes. Yeah, in, in the library at, the, uh, at Wayne Junior Senior High School. So uh, if you're interested in that, uh, that's, uh, that's where you want to be on the second Monday of the month uh, for their, for their uh, school board meeting. You know. So we've, we've uh, covered a lot of bases here with the, with the school uh, this week. Uh, Mark Lenahan, the superintendent of schools uh, for Wayne Community Schools, has been our guest here on uh, Coffee Talk. And uh, as I said, first day of school. Wow, it's just seven days away or six days away. So you know, time time flies when you're having fun. Time flies. Summer. It's at the end of the school year. Always, we always say, boy, that school year went fast. And then summer comes, and then this time of year, boy, summer went fast. Yeah. I, I think it has to do with age, Mike. I think know? it does. I, I uh, it seemed like I was in maybe my twenties, like just a few years ago, and I, I hit fifty this year. So yeah. I, don't, I don't know what. Well, you and I are in the same boat. Time. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, Mark, thanks a lot for stopping in this this uh, week here on Coffee Talk and. Uh, Good luck with the coming school year. Thank you for having me, and, and thank you to the community and, and all the support that, that the community provides Wayne Community Schools. We, we certainly couldn't do what we do without the support of our, of our community and our parents and our patrons. So for all that, we say thank you. All right, well, that'll do it for this week's edition of Coffee Talk here on MyWayNews.com. We'll be back with another edition next week. Till then, for uh, Mark Linehan, for our sponsors, uh, The Coffee Shop and Jason Sears Flooring, this is Mike Carnes. Have yourselves a good week, and we'll see you next week here on Coffee Talk.